is Sindel Jones Quicksilver, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh, just um, American and also ASL. All right, my favorite food is actually su sushi. Uh, I grew up on it when I was a little boy, and I always had my volcano roll. Uh, I always had like other kinds of favorites too along the way as my taste buds actually just grew and grew and grew. <laughs> uh, not too well. I tried a long time ago and I failed on trying to roll it, so. <laughs> I was raised here in Florida, uh, but in New York for the first eight years of my life. I don't really miss New York, but I do miss being up north in the cold, actually. Uh, I miss the snow, I do. I've been down here in Florida for 30 something years. I'm 41. And so far, I have just been like <laughs> expanding all my careers, like going, like having too many actually. One of them is actually uh, teaching um, sign language. I think it's important because. It is like, you know, what we're coming across to in, our, in the future of like people with disabilities, such as the uh, deaf and hard of hearing. Uh, those who have been diagnosed like me with Meniere's disease are struggling with like, you know, hearing loss and uh, tinnitus as well. I've been diagnosed with tinnitus and has just been like overwhelming for me and it's not really a pretty sight to actually live with Meniere's disease. It's a curse, practically. Yeah. Family means having parents who are there for you, always, but not the parents I've had. Because I do feel like an orphan every day shows in the family is always important. I believe that especially having my own chosen family uh, has been always there for me, has always been helpful for me. I have a sister now. I look up to as a sister. I always wanted to have a sister and I know we have our fights. No one's perfect. Find out who you are and search deep inside, discover who you are and strive to get to where you need to be. Don't stop. Learn sign language, of course, because eventually you're going to lose your hearing as you get older. You're going to go through a lot of pain when you enter college, when you have to face it. And start HRT early. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Yeah, HRT has uh, changed me, like, you know, to be a better woman than other people I have been around in my early life. And also those who have been very good influences. There's always like, you know, the yin and the yang, so to speak. Like you want to look at like who are the better women in your life and who weren't. You can think that your ex is like one of the most am amazing women that you have ever had in your life, but look at other people. It doesn't always have to be your past ex. I've had women all my life I knew five Megans when I was in high school. <laughs> and also, it, it just helps me realize and discover the person I am today. What defines being a woman is having to understand your inner self to match your outer self as far as being a trans woman like myself, uh, especially being hard of hearing and living with this disease. It 
it's all like combined almost. <laughs> my happy place? Wow. I don't think I really have a happy place. If I have to name one, like, you know, a real geographic location, I would have to say Chicago. Um, the time when I was there in 2019 with my past ex, Gabrielle and Alvin, and uh, when she was an, a better person back then. I would quote a friend of mine on that one, who told me, I was more of a man than you would ever be, and now I'm more of a woman than you'll ever have. Let's say what scares me about like people, I'd have to say their bigotry, their intolerance, their push towards like, you know, what they, they would like to have as a theocratic government, which is not what the United States was founded on a long time ago. I would like to inspire people on my activism, what I do, not just as a transgender rights activist, but also as an environmental activist. I practically have like the lowest carbon footprint out of everybody around here. Um, but I'm an all-around activist. Five to ten years from now, I hope to be living in Chicago, growing a family, getting a chance to feel all four seasons all over again, because I know we all miss that. Uh, but other things I would see myself as in five to ten years from now would be being successful in my podcast. Make a living out of like, you know, my screenwriting career and also my clothing company career. I know I have like a lot <laughs> on my plate, but it just keeps going on and on and on. So I, I try to like see if I can minimize that. It's not easy. It's just trying to like spread love, spread messages out there that, you know, we can we can be seen and heard in the community because we're sharing this larger world with everyone else and they've got to learn how to be more civilized with us, you know? Civil uh, you know, being more of a civilization, let's trace that back to like hundreds of thousands of years ago. It means coming together, like, you know, from one community to another, clashing together, working things out, hand in hand, supporting each other, no matter who's going through any kind of tough times, whether they're struggling financially or not, helping hands are always going to be there. We've been like this long before money even was invented. Can we be like that again? Well, despite the fact that I have studied um, all my anthropology, I majored in all my anthropology courses when I was in college, I would say that the way we evolve, the way we are now, as a culture of people, despite our differences, we can still come together and help each other. This is I Love You. Um, well, this is uh, Proud. I think it's, yeah, it goes out proud like that. Um, transgender this with the T turning it around like that non-binary uh, that has not been yet known within the deaf and hard of hearing community uh, yet. Mm -hmm.